Hey everybody, it's Batjack JW, and yes, Saturday morning is that time again. Everybody's tuned in, hopefully. Uh, maybe some people are not. It's not Saturday morning. Uh, perhaps maybe uh, midday, the uh, lunchtime, at night. Uh, maybe it's not even Saturday. You're tuned in a little late. Uh, so, anyway, those of you, because we've been getting a lot of subscribers on the channel. Those of you that are just tuned in or just clicked on this video because you're a new subscriber, you're wondering, now what in the world is this? What, what kind of channel is this? Um, this is the Saturday morning radio episode that we do. We just chat, we get together, and uh, I tell you about some stuff that the channel's doing, I read off some comments, do some shout outs, and tell you a little bit about what's going on with the channel, uh, what turns we're taking, where we're heading, and all that sort of stuff. And sometimes you get a little sneak peek of something that hasn't even appeared in a main video on the channel. So that's what this is all about, too. So we're going to go ahead and get started. As you can see, the title of this one is The Collection of Sorts. <laughs> all right. So I got some uh, comments here we're going to go over. And those of you that are um, tuned in here audio-wise, too, uh, you're hearing this uh, those of you that actually subscribe to the second channel as Batjack JW Radio Show are hearing the audio. And those of you that follow me on Patreon, I do thank you very much there. You get to see a lot of videos exclusively and also early release videos that have not quite made their way to the main channel yet. But they're in line to, but those of you that are on Patreon have already seen them. Like you've probably seen the nice close-up videos of this thing right here. So, ping pong. What is that? All right, let's get let's get going here. We have Russ Elder. He is tuned in. He says, "I am hanging with my twin seven-year-old grandsons and watching Bat Jack on a beautiful Saturday morning. What can be better?" Right there. Thank you very much, there, Russ. I get a lot of kind comments from a lot of you, which is greatly appreciated, and that's why in the end I keep doing this. this is, it really makes it all worth doing when I got such great subscribers like you guys. Joe P says, thanks for good news, JW. I'm with Burner. You really need to see Terrence Hill movies, especially My Name is Nobody with Henry Fonda. Classic 70s westerns you must watch. All right. So we'll have to check them out. I recently got Amazon Prime. Maybe it's on there. Uh, Peppered 88 says, I'm still watching, but he's been in the hospital. Uh, he's got been on some uh, antibiotics, and he's been sick. Uh, please... Get better, Pepper at 88. I hope you're better. Uh, you know, all all prayers with you. I don't want none of the uh, you guys getting sick or anything like that. Of course, now we're entering uh, the colder seasons now. People are going to, you know, it's easier to get sick. Last year, I know, I got really uh, hammered with getting sick, like, left and right. It felt like I was getting pneumonia and uh, flu and then back to getting a cold and almost back to pneumonia. I don't know. It seems like I was spending a lot of money. Uh, going to Walgreens, buying medication to get myself better. So uh, everybody stay in good health. Uh, and Pepper 88, you know, Godspeed on recovery there. All right, Douglas Walther, thanks for doing what you do, Bat Jack JW. Thank you, Douglas. Appreciate that. And Tree Climber says he is second to comment. <laughs> All right. And we have... Uh, Jerry Johnson, the number two, uh, says, I use a lot of those Winchester primers my, in my reloads. They work great in my shotgun shell reloads and handgun reloads, too. Uh, make sure you read the reloading manual first, which uh, primers go in your handgun loads, Bat Jack. Uh, keep up the great content. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, you know, I was taught reloading from a very, uh, a guy that was, loading probably for longer than I've been alive <laughs> but you know that's where I started I started with Lee classic loader and everything uh, so I mean uh, I've probably been loading for seven eight years and actually my job that I got out here uh, where I started with the company was manufacturing their ammunition on a very large scale uh, for everything they need I mean tens and thousands of rounds weekly uh, <laughs> so um, I like to say I'm pretty much okay with uh, reloading there, although you can never learn enough. Always look into things, always read, 
never feel like you've learned everything. That's why I love music so much, and that was my first love that always will be uh, music. I've loved playing music ever since I picked up uh, some drumsticks and started hammering drums. That's right, I used to be a drummer, and that is my very first love, always will be. Uh, that's, that came long before firearms and will always come first for me because there's something about it I absolutely love and, you know, just <laughs> may sell everything and just buy a drum set. <laughs> All right. Darren Bag, six gun. Thank you. The Duke is alive and well. He's right up here. Uh, keep up the great uh, work, Bad Jack, and don't forget to check out that movie, Legends of the Fall. I have to look at it. I have to find it. I have to get, get a hold of it. I know you will like it. Full, a lot, uh, it's full of a lot, a lot of guns uh, later. Okay. Long live the Duke. All right. Jeffrey Richardson says, I have never owned a Glock, but I do lean towards longer barrels. Uh, I, the 34 would be his pick. And the 34, yes, it is, uh, it's interesting. Being, I've actually, I've owned a 17 and a 23, which is basically a 19 uh, in size wise. It's just the 40 caliber, but I had it running in the nine millimeter barrel conversion. So uh, interesting bullet uh, testings. Can't wait. Hope you keep going at 20 minutes, still hanging on. Well, thank you very much, Jeffrey. I really appreciate it. I, I do have some things to share with you guys on that. Uh, 454 Packer says, happy Saturday. I like your Colt shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that shirt is the very first one to appear with me uh, on uh, on doing all this kind of stuff. You know, the very first uh, video and everything. The Bohemian Hunting Club, good show, JW. I'm a day late and a dollar short as usual. Uh, so uh, Jeffrey Kelly says, why don't you get a 22 TCM conversion slide? Uh, mainly because I just don't. Um, I, uh, I just don't like oddball calibers that are too far fetched. I mean, I, I nine millimeter. You know, you can go to Walmart, get it, or anywhere. You know, pretty much and stuff like that. Forty five. I just keep it simple. Uh, so, and uh, my buddies over there, the Arizona Ghost Riders, which our channel there has been doing extremely well. I am so grateful to be a part of their projects and get to do things like that. So, uh, and I'm just been able to live up some really cool stuff that I love to do, which is acting, filming, and movie stuff like that. So uh, that's really where the heart is. So I really have to thank uh, Santee over there at the Arizona Ghost Riders for having that come true for me. So I really enjoy that a lot. Uh, the movie thing really is a huge passion of mine. And uh, Bob Hartman, he says, keep going, Batjack. Never give up. Our Second Amendment needs you. Mr. Mark Mac 85 always a pleasure to watch your videos and share a cup of coffee with you, sir. And right back at you, I hope everybody's got their coffee. I forgot mine <laughs> before we turned on this camera. I had the other recorder going already. So, and I got three wolves, 45.7. He says, Kona in the morning, lock on my hip, life is good. <laughs> and there it says, the crazy Scotsman says, uh, nice, happy to watch all the way through, brother. You were one of the first... I start watching and continue to watch you down to uh, watch you you down to earth and makes a difference. Uh, I'm sure that's a typo on his part, but I try to be. You know, I, I don't. Uh, I'm just not one of those guys that take things all too serious. I it just I never. It kind of goes back to what uh, Heath Ledger says in Batman. Why so serious? Uh, really, why so serious? Why? Why is there? Why is everything have to be so serious? Like you know, not, you know, oh, this guy made this horrible. I'm mean, gonna, I, I gotta get on there and put my two cents in there. I really don't care. <laughs> uh, in fact, kind of like my uh, my favorite country singer Justin Moore. He released an album that says, I kind of don't care. <laughs> um, I, you know what? I mean, life is so short. You know, you guys, you gotta live. You gotta laugh because life is a full as a train ride going full steam. You know what? You got to enjoy it and live it up because you never know when your stop's going to be. And it could be the next stop. So, and, but then it's like you stop and you, you're at the, uh, the gates and you say, well, what have I done in my life? Well, let's see, I got angrier a lot and uh, I ridiculed a lot of other people and uh, made fun of them and took everything so serious and thought I could be a know-it-all and a walking Wikipedia. Great. Awesome. Good for you. I like to say, you know what? 
I lived, I laughed, I had fun, did this, did that, learned this, had a good time, met a lot of cool people, shared a lot of things with people, made a lot of people laugh, got in touch with people that even though I never met face to face, that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I'd rather prefer to do that. But that's just me, call me crazy. <laughs> Brian Fuller, keep on brother, I will do so. Thank you, Brian. And uh, Jeffrey Richardson says, again, you are, you are very welcome. Thank you for all you do. And you, every one of you are very welcome for everything. I, I really appreciate it. You know, and thank you for coming around and watching the stuff. Scott F., all I can say is uh, always do it your way. It is your channel. Good stuff. Yes. But I also want to make it your guys' channel, too. I want to make sure that you guys, uh, you know, have some input. I like to involve you guys. I really do. All right. And uh, it's crazy, uh, Scotsman, again, he's in there. He's crazy, you know. <laughs> also, if you're up to it, we can figure out a live stream together sometime. That would be cool. That would be cool. Uh, if I was, uh, I, I'm really, really, I'm such an analog person. Believe me, this, all this, what we're doing here is like borderline. How in the heck am I actually doing this? Uh, how did I even do that live stream myself? I don't know. So if there's a way that I could, that we could do it and figure it out where it's not too difficult for me, I would love to, but uh, we'll have to figure it out. I don't know. Uh, that Crazy Scotsman, if you have made it this far, if you're watching, uh, yeah, I would like to do the live stream with everybody, but uh, I, for me, I don't know. I, I mean, I do it off my phone. That's how I did it. I don't uh, have a desktop with a, a webcam. I don't even know how to begin to start with any of that stuff. So that's just me because I'm just such, uh, again, I'm really analog. <laughs> All right, Edward Petty, glad to see you continuing to make videos. And uh, I got Eric uh, Talkington. Uh, just so you know, Google Fathom events uh, have been showing screenings, uh, or he said Google Fathom. See, that's how analog I am. I, I, Google, that's right. That's a search thing we use. <laughs> Um, yes, he was talking about how the theaters are showing like Rebel Without a Cause and stuff like that, which I did see down here at the local theater where I, uh, near where I live here. Uh, they are showing Rebel Without a Cause. I would like to see Steve McQueen Bullet in there. That's definitely, I did get to see um, uh, The Quiet Man with uh, John Wayne in the theater. I did get to see that. So, <laughs> all right. November is the original Die Hard. Hey, they're going to play Die Hard. Yeah. I remember seeing Die Hard 3 in the theaters with my parents. Mr. Holster, he was first. Mr. Holster, he was commented there. Hope all is well, Mr. Holster. Hope your uh, your health and everything. Godspeed with you. Yeah, keep going. All right. And he said, I got one from John Ratko. I hope I'm saying that right, John. Uh, sensing, a, uh, sensing a new Saturday tradition brewing. New videos from the Arizona Ghost Rider. And Batjack JW with uh, Dustin, why? I, sorry, I'm not. I'm not going to pronounce that last name because I'm going to butcher it and make fun of somebody, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, EB Saint, those new grips on your uh, on your Colt look great. Thank you. I, you know, I really like them and uh, just what they tied in for me and uh, back in the movie. You know what other grips I really want to do and always wanted to do this was get those ones from the movie Cobra with Sylvester Stallone and put those on like a nice little Colt. Uh, commander or something like that i wanted to get one of those that's what i think that would be super cool to do all right okay baron k says keep going and we got russ elder good man keep on brother i will do so thank you russ appreciate it and uh, so the tree climber says am i going deaf or is the sound turned low i I'm, I'm not sure you know maybe sometimes the sound goes in and out i don't know hopefully we're doing good also, if you want to check out the second channel, that's where the audio recording is. You can maybe uh, sync them together and, uh, you know, maybe the audio is better on the little recorder here. I don't know. Uh, but I'm working on getting a new camera and all that. I just, you know, just try to save the money and, and do so. I wish the revenue was a little bit better, but we could do stuff like that. But anyway, all right. There's all the comments and everything, and I know we're over. We're quite a ways into the uh, the radio show here, but yeah, the Glock 34. I've been shooting it a little bit, so I've actually been shooting it with um, some of the uh, this other the ammo that I got there. Let me get this uh, little rag right here because I'm gonna get 
good old ballastol all over the place. But um, I um, I was uh, shooting those uh, molly coated rounds through this thing, and I am curious as to see how it's looking. And you know what, man, that's crazy. It looks so clean in there, like it really hasn't been all that messed up. And we'll go ahead and uh, hit a little bit of ballast on there. And around the the, uh, the breach here and everything is a little dirty, so we'll go ahead and clean that up. But um, Yeah, not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. I don't know if they, uh, anything on the ramp there. I'm looking for any kind of build up around anything and then we'll go ahead and run one of these awesome uh, ramrod q-tip giant q-tips down there look at that look how clean that is wow one time one time through and it just you know a little bit of a uh, crud on there let's run let's let's run a fresh one and see what happens here all right a little bit more uh, oil there i hope i didn't just break my my computer screen yeah, that's not too bad. A little bit of a uh, little bit of fouling there. Yeah, a little bit, not too bad here. Just uh, give it a good. Now I buy um, I buy these. Uh, wow, that's okay. Maybe there is some uh, some build up there that I'm just not seeing. You got to really get it, scrub it. Yeah. A little bit, a bit of a, a build up there. We'll have to um, have to do a little bit more. I like these. I like these ramrod things, and I, I buy um, one size larger. Is what I was trying to say to you. I, I do. I buy one size larger. These are actually for a forty. And the reason I do that is to get a little bit of a tighter fit through these things. So it really grips, pulls it through. That's a little bit better now. A little bit of gray coming through there. Um, never did notice that. I guess, uh, I don't know. It could be, now I know those things are molly coated, whatever all that really truly means. I really don't know. Um, that looks clean to me. They came out a lot uh, lighter color lighter in color than it, uh, it did at first. So go ahead and clean through all this. Now I'm using accurate number two powder uh, and I'm not a fan of that powder. I'm just using it up because that's what I got. Uh, I don't like it because it's really fine. It's, uh, it's super fine and it gets all up into your gun in areas. It almost kind of is like sand. Uh, and that's what I'm actually seeing here because I've been shooting it and I'm seeing a lot of it in through here and I'm not liking it at all. Uh, I have, I, I was uh, trying it out, seeing what it was all about because uh, at work, that's what we're using for manufacturing stuff. So I wanted to just kind of learn a little bit about it. So I went ahead and bought some to test it out myself and boy, am I just like, yeah, I think I'll pass on that stuff for sure. You know, with these things, uh, just kind of get on. It's not too bad. A little bit here and there in the frame. But don't really need to go too crazy and, and clean it up too much. Because, uh, again, I mean, I as much as I've been firing this thing, I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm, I'm trying to clean it uh, too much because I, I have been firing it a lot. So, how's the uh, bolt face looking here? Not too bad. Clean up the firing pin just a little bit. All right. So, and um, where is my little applicator? I guess I don't have it. We'll go ahead and just uh, use, uh, use the, the spray. I'll just go ahead and uh, coat the, uh, the sides here and everything that uh, is mostly contacting. Nice thing about these, they these tend to stay pretty clean and everything. So now you can, I do have this. Uh, I have been using this Wilson Combat stuff. Uh, 
right here, the Wilson Combat Grease. So I can go ahead and actually, if I want to, pull a little bit on the rails here. And that'll, that'll spread itself around. I'll put a little bit, just a, just a tiny bit right here. That'll spread itself around. There we go. I don't want any, uh, too much excess all over it. That's the thing about these. They're really made to run fairly, uh, fairly dry, but you do want to lube them in certain areas. But, uh, yeah. I've been liking it. It's the same size as a 1911. I know a lot of people are like, man, that's, a, that's one heck of a, a piece. You know, it's got quite a long slide on it and everything, but uh, I've been liking it a lot. I really have been. I'm really satisfied with it. Uh, it'll stay for now. <laughs> I always say that, and then I wind up selling stuff. But now I need it for work. So, okay. Ooh. All right, so hands with the, the vlog or the uh, the little uh, radio video here. I didn't want to uh, cut anybody short and everything, wondering what the heck is going on. I thought we were talking about collections and stuff. Uh, we're 20 something minutes into this thing. We haven't done it. So I wanted to show you a little bit of things that I like collecting. And I, you know, when I go to gun shows or shop around, uh, stuff that I like to uh, get. This is not everything, but it's just some stuff that I uh, want to tell you, you know, things that I got. Like, I'm a really big sucker for these these old Italian-type style switchblades. This is an inexpensive one, but I got it. And this has actually shown up in um, a skit or two that I've done with the uh, Ghost Riders and Santee and stuff. So this has actually been used in one of the skits. Uh, it's actually, this is the one, if you've been on my second channel, the Discount Dentist uh, episode that we did where I was a discounted dentist and I busted this thing out and Santee reacts to it this is the one that we used in that uh, this is really cool and it's been set up at, for uh for our skits because the blade has been dulled and the tip is not as uh sharp and also i think this also appeared in one of his wanted poster uh episodes where i came up and clicked it open and stabbed right through a wanted poster and this was the knife that we used right here so that's really cool i got it and i just like the way it looked it's unique it's got the kind of stag uh, handles on there so really neat. It's a flat grind blade, meaning it doesn't have any of uh, the beveling on it. So it really appears on, on camera uh, kind of differently. Uh, something I recently just picked up is actually this thing right here, which is a old school uh, 1911 magazine. In fact, I think it needs a little bit of oil here. Uh, preserve it, make sure it stays in good shape. Because I picked this up, I kind of just fell into it and I uh, wound up picking it up. It's uh, you see the it's a two tone. That's how they, they used to do them, and it's got the lanyard loop on the bottom. So that's going to go right into the collection with the uh, with the 1911 I got that's uh, on the older side. So it's cool to actually come across some of this stuff and just pick it up like that for sure. Definitely, that's really neat. And now I got oil back all over my hands, and um, sticking on the knife thing. Uh, this is something I bought a little thing that I. Did a video on it and everything. This is a Benchmade. I'm not much into high-end knives. Uh, I'm not like a big-time educated guy on them or anything like that. But this is a Benchmade called an Auto Striker. It's a push-button knife. Yeah, it's a tonneau blade. It's pretty cool. Yeah, these are expensive. They're very expensive, at least for me, thinking. Because, I mean, I paid like, you know, like 20, 13 you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks for these things. And, uh, you know, this, you're talking a couple hundred bucks, something like that. Uh, but I bought this because of the movie Heist with uh, uh, Gene Hackman, Danny DeVito. Uh, there's a scene where Danny DeVito is heading to the boat, and he says, give me a ship. He hands it to him. He says, yes, pay you in gold. So he has one. His, is a, his has got serrated uh, blade. I'm not a fan of serrated blades, so I bought the uh, just the regular one here with the nothing but... Yeah, I bought that strictly just because of the movie. It was pretty cool. It kind of remains in a box. That's it. I don't really like carrying it or anything because it's kind of expensive. And it's just a movie uh, movie reference. I did not dull the blade on that one, no. <laughs> um, this is a cool thing I picked up. This is a dummy grenade that I got from a gun show. And the cool thing about this one is this is an older vintage one. The little cool little bumpy things on it, it's a pineapple style, are real pronounced. They're really, they're, they're there. 
Uh, a lot of the ones you see now don't really look like this. It doesn't have all the detail like this, and it says like RFX, and I'm sure it's just uh, the castings to signify it's a fake grenade. It is fake. It's got a hole in the bottom, so and the thing unscrews. It's a giant paperweight. I think these. I think the top part is is a deactivated fuse or something like that. But you know, you can pick these up in like surplus stores online. You know, kind of gimmicks. You always see something like attached to it, like a number, and it says, "Hey, complaint department, pull the pin or pull the number, or something, take the number, or something like that." But it's really cool. I, I had to pick that up. I think about like, I, I forget what I got for it. I got into it, but you know, it's vintage, so it's got the more pronounced uh, ridges and everything in it. So I something I had to have. Um, here's another. Speaking of auto knives, this is a, this is an authentic. This is old. This is a Rizzuto uh, Italian stiletto type knife. These are uh, cheaply made, and that's why they're collectible. But this is a Rizzuto. It's a swing guard. So the guard here actually folds down with the blade. And how you, you close it up is you actually push the button here to close it up. And then you were to push the button again to fire it. It has a nice snap to it. I love that. Uh, this is a classic, classic uh, switch blade here. And these are kind of expensive. They, they're collectible. They're expensive. So I don't do much to it. I, I polish it and make sure it's uh, nice and it works and everything. And I don't play around with it too much because it is a collector's item. I just admire it for what it is, just as that. And it's really neat. Um, I did want to get it involved in a skit or two, you know, just to have it on camera and on film. But it really is a cool knife. That, that's, a, that's a nice classic. They also, the classic would have been with the black handles. I had the choice of white or the black. I chose the white because it was different, unique, something. Uh, you know, but they wind up, might wind up with the black ones. <laughs> And uh, I think this is the last thing on the list to show you guys. Uh, this is actually a vintage uh, World War II, uh, what do you call it, like a, a flap holster for 1911. You got the, uh, the leather ties down there. It even says 1942 Boyd on the back. I bought this thing, seriously, I, I, I paid like 20 bucks for it. I'm not kidding. Uh, I found this like in an old uh, general store that was just hanging on the wall. Feller just... Uh, you know, had a price tag on it. I, I looked at it. I thought it was reproduction at first, really did. When I paid for it and got it, I went, you know what? I looked at it, I said, man, this thing is, this is the real deal. So yes, into the collection it went uh, along with the uh, vintage 1911s I got. Uh, hopefully the CMP is uh, doing, filling the market with those so we can all get a hold of some and not pay that outrageous price that some of these people want like at gun shows. So, all right, and the last thing before I let you guys get out of here, I know it's been a heck of a long video this time around, but I wanted to show this to you. Ah, uh, the beautiful 629 has made another appearance. Yes, having messages, people say, hey, are you ever gonna break that thing out again to show it? Oh, this is such a beautiful revolver. 629 Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum. Uh, it is, a, it is a, um, a newer one, so you can still get them. Uh, frame mounted a uh, firing pin there but I don't care that stuff doesn't bother me yeah it has the key lock big deal whoop de do uh doesn't bother me because this is simply just the cool factor of it uh the tales from the crypt movie uh the episode I mean season two cutting cards Lance Hendrickson and Kevin Thie um he says I've got a 44 around the glove compartment of my car so that is just that did it for me I'm like man what the heck snub nose 44 magnum that's crazy so this is just beautiful. I love this thing. This is one of my favorite revolvers, I tell you, right there. So it's going to make an appearance, actually. It's coming up. And I took a little uh, screen clip from that, that uh, episode of Cutting Cards. So I think that the video is titled uh, 629 Again? I don't know. Those of you on Patreon, you've already seen it. So I'm going to get out of here, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with me on Saturday morning. Go out, be safe, uh, have a good weekend, and we'll we'll catch each uh, we'll catch each other again on the next Saturday. And of course, in between the week, all the other videos I like post up here on the channel. So thanks for staying with me and being subscribed.